Hi, boys and girls, it's Miss Bailey, and it is time for another mystery instrument of the week. Are you ready for our mystery instrument of the week? Here is our mystery instrument of the week. Are you ready for your clues? Clue number one. For this instrument, we play it with a rubber-headed mallet. Clue number two. This instrument also has 13 bars on it. And our last clue. This instrument has two members of its family, the alto and the soprano. Do you know what the mystery instrument of the week is? If you said glockenspiel, then you are correct. Let me turn the camera around so you can see our glockenspiels. Here are two glockenspiels. The first glockenspiel is the one I played for you, and that is the alto glockenspiel. The second glockenspiel is smaller, and that is called the soprano glockenspiel. And you can hear that there's a difference between the sounds of these two instruments. Smaller box, smaller bars, higher pitch. Bigger box, bigger bars, lower pitch. So when I tap the C bar on my alto glockenspiel, and then I tap the C bar on my soprano, although it's playing the same pitch, one is an octave higher, our smaller instrument. And just as we talked about with our xylophone and metallophones, glockenspiels also can play melody. They can play harmony as well. But typically, glockenspiels hold a very special job in any ensemble that they are used in. I often liken the glockenspiel to adding the extra frosting on your cake. You know, when you make a cake, a birthday cake, there's frosting on it, but that decorative frosting on it with the flowers and all of the extra stuff, that's the glockenspiel. The glockenspiel is often used to add a little something extra to the performance. And so our glockenspiel oftentimes plays little highlights in the piece, not the melody or the harmony. All right, thank you so much for joining me today, musicians. I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.